What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to learn how to build a stock price alarm bot in Python so essentially a script that is running in the background waiting for stock prices of multiple symbols to hit a certain maximum price or a certain minimum price to then either sell the stock if it's too high or buy the stock if it's too low so if there is a buying opportunity and this is what we're going to build today in Python so let us get right into it. It's not a game. It's a All right, now for this project, we're going to make use of two external Python libraries. One is going to be the pandas data reader, which is what we're going to use to get data from the Yahoo Finance API. And the second one is going to be win notify, which is what we're going to use to create Windows notifications. So basically pop ups at the bottom right that say, now we have a price alert, you should now sell you should now buy click here to get to your broker. Uh, those are the two libraries that we're going to use that are external. So not part of the core Python stack. And before we get into the installation and into the actual coding, I want to mention briefly here, just as a disclaimer, nothing here is financial advice. This is just programming advice. Whenever you're doing trading or investing of any sort, 100% your responsibility, your capital is at risk. None of my videos is financial advice, and I'm not a financial professional. So having said that, the first thing that we want to do is we want to open up a command line and we want to type pip install pandas dash data reader like that. Once you have that, pip install win notify I have a video on win notify on my channel. So you might want to check that out. If you're interested in the library itself here, we're just going to use it for the notifications. Um, and then we can go into the code and start by importing the OS module and the time module, which are both part of the core Python stack, then we're going to also import pandas underscore data reader, so not dash underscore data reader as web. And then finally, from win notify, we're going to import the notification and audio with a lowercase a. So those are the imports. And the basic idea now is that we have certain stock tickers, certain stock symbols that we're looking at, for example, we can create this list here tickers. And here we might have a couple of stocks on our watch list, for example, Apple, uh, Facebook, Nvidia, Goldman Sachs, Wells Fargo, maybe something like that, you can fill that list up with a couple more tickers if you want to. If you don't know the ticker symbol of a stock, you just go to Google and you type Apple stock ticker or stock symbol or something like that. And you're going to find it immediately. If the company is of course, public, not every company is on the stock market. Um, and then what we do is we say upper underscore limits. And now we specify the price that we say, okay, at this price, this would be a price alert. So this is something uh, where I would say, okay, if it hits that price, it's too high, I would now like to sell and you can decide for yourself what that is. I'm not I'm now just going to pick something for Apple 200 for Facebook. Um, I don't know what the current stock price is here. I'm just going to pick some values, we're going to adjust them later on. I'm, I'm not sure what the stock price is at the moment. So I'm going to just pick some values and some of them are going to trigger immediately because probably some of them are more expensive than what I'm typing here. Uh, but that's the basic principle. So you choose an upper, an upper limit, and then you basically just say, okay, when you hit that price, we're going to get a price alert, same can be done now for lower limits. And before we just pick arbitrary values, let me just briefly do something we're going to load now just for ourselves This is not going to be part of the script, we're just going to load now all the stock prices so that we see actually um, what we have here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, for ticker in tickers, we're going to load now the stock price. So we're going to print actually web dot data reader. And we want to have the ticker symbol and the Yahoo as the API. And now we're going to say I lock negative one to get the last one. And then we're going to say close to get the close price. And now doing that, we should get a pretty good idea of what the stock price is. Okay, for Apple, it's fine. Okay, so those are the prices. So we can adjust now the limits we can delete that again. And we can adjust these two limits here. So upper limits for Apple is fine, I guess for Facebook, it's a bit too high. So let's go with 220. For Nvidia, let's go with 240 or something like that. Goldman Sachs, let's go with 400. And for Wells Fargo, let's go with 70 or something. 
Now the lower limit is the opposite. So for example, if I see this is now, uh, if I'm, if, if I have the opinion that Apple is properly valued and Apple drops to a hundred, maybe I want to buy. So what I could do here is I could set hundred as the lower limit. Then I would get a price alert telling me, Hey, you can now buy Apple for a very cheap price. For example, I can choose whatever that price, uh, whatever price I like. So here I could go with 130 here. I could go with 140. Here I could go with um, 280 and here I could go with 30. I don't know. We're just going to pick some arbitrary values here. So those are the values. However, you determine that that's your, uh, your thing to do, right? This is your investment decision if you want to make one. And now what we do is we basically run an endless loop. We say while true, check for this, check for these uh, boundaries all the time. And when you see a violation, when you see that some price crosses those boundaries, make a price alert. So say that something uh, has changed and we now have a buying opportunity or something like that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have a time sleep in the beginning. And of course, if you run this in not really production, but if you actually run this on your computer long term, you want to have something like maybe a minute or at least half a minute of delay for this video. Now we're just going to use two seconds at least while we're still coding to see how it works. And then, you know, once it's done, you can change this to 60 seconds to have one minute pause to have a one minute pause. And all we do now is we say for I, we're going to use the index because those are all at the same position. So we're going to use the index for the individual collection. So we're going to say for I in range length tickers. What we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, if and actually we need to determine the last prices first. So actually what we did before, we now have to do it again. So we're going to say last prices is going to be and we're going to use a list comprehension here. We're going to say web data reader for ticker from Yahoo Finance. And we're going to get from this one here, the adjusted adjusted close, we want to have the last one for ticker in tickers. So that's a long line here, you can see the full line, hopefully, there you go. So we get the adjusted close, the last adjusted close price adjusted means adjusted to stock splits, um, the last price for the respective ticker for each ticker, right? That's the idea. Now what we do is we say, okay, if the last price is at the index I, so the, the last price at the index I, which is for the respective ticker symbol, um, if that price is above the upper limits price of the same index, then essentially we have a sell alert. So the price is too high, maybe you want to sell. So what we do here is we create now a toast notification by saying notification. And here we now spec <clears throat> sorry, specify a couple of uh, parameters. So first of all, we say, neural nine stock alarm bot or something like that. And then we can say, okay, the title of the message is price alert uh, for and then we can say, I don't know, ticker. Does it does it work like that? What's the problem here? Ticker is not known. Ah, Okay, tickers I sorry, like that. Um, so that's the title and the message is going to be MSG is going to be uh, tickers. Come on. Tickers. I has reached. Okay, let me go out of those brackets has reached a price of and then here. Last prices I you might want to sell. Right? So we have this message and we now can also add an icon. Now what you choose as an icon, first of all, the icon is optional, you can just use no icon. But if you want to use an icon, you just download some image from the internet, I have here some copyright free images. So we have this stop here when we have a price going too high. And I have this dollar uh, image here if the price is too low, so we can buy. So what I'm going to do here in this case is I'm going to say I can equals OS dot path dot join and I want to get the current wo working directory. So get CWD, I'm going to join this with the cell uh, PNG. 
that's the idea here. And the last thing that I want to do here is I want to say duration equals long. And then we can actually actually finish that. And then all we need to do is we say toast dot add actions. This is also optional. If you want to go to your stock broker to do that, you can say, okay, the label of the button that we have here is going to be go to stock broker, whatever your stock broker is, by the way, also applicable to crypto, you don't have to do this with stocks only. And a launch is going to be the action. And in my case, I'm going to just use here now. Um, neural nine.com, which is not a broker, obviously, this is just just my website. But here you would place the URL of your broker. So when you click on the button, you would get to your uh, Robin Hood or whatever broker you're using. And this is going to be done by the click of a button. And then we're going to say now toast dot uh, set audio and what we're going to use here is audio dot. Uh, which one did I use here in the prepared code looping alarm six for selling. That's that. And all we need to do now finally is toast dot show. And that is the basic idea. So if the last price of a particular ticker reaches the upper limit of that particular ticker, uh, or company or stock, whatever, we display this notification that says price alert for whatever the ticker name is. And then we say, okay, it has reached a price of whatever you might want to sell. And that's basically it, we can now click the button to get to the stock broker. If this is not the case, we can have another case, which is Elif, the last price for that ticker is lower than the lower limit of that company or for that stock price. And in this case, we basically copy all of that code, we don't have to write it again, we just uh, change here, price alert for stays the same has reached a price of whatever. And here you might want to buy. And of course, here we're going to change this to buy dot JPEG. In my case, and the rest actually stays the same. I think I used a different alarm, though, for buying, I think I used the looping alarm eight. And that is the basic structure here. The only thing that we now need to do here is we need to have time sleep one. Why do we have time sleep one here as well? In the rare case that two notifications will come at the same time. So for example, two tickers, Apple and Facebook um, have reached a limit if they come at the exact same time. The problem is that you're not going to see both notifications. Whereas if you have one second between those, you're going to see uh, both notifications show up, right? Even though it's unlikely that this is going to happen at the same time, still, it could happen. Now we're going to leave this as two now. And I don't think that we're going to see anything. But let's run this now, without any problems. So basically, nothing is happening. I think, because we don't have any violations, we don't have any, um, any margin violations, so to say no limit was crossed. But to see some progress, what we can do is we can print the last prices just to see that things are changing. In fact, so of course, it takes some time to load all the ticker symbols. But here you can see we have the prices. And if the prices change, the stock market is open, by the way, because we have 3:51 p.m. in Austria, which is um, 9:51 p.m. in New York, I think so the stock market is opened already. But we can now go ahead and adjust the boundaries a little bit. So we can say, okay, if Apple reaches a price of 161, um, we get an upper limit if it reaches the price of 160. Exactly. Uh, we will get a lower limit. So maybe we can trigger it like that. I'm going to turn on the audio as well here on, on my computer. Let's wait. Stock price should move, we're going to wait two or three iterations for this to happen. Maybe it will happen, maybe not. Maybe just to speed this up, let me just remove the last three. So that we have less tickers to go through. Let's do it like that. And this thing, you know, you leave it running all the time, you run it via CMD, or you run it as a window less application, or what you can also do is you can run this in combination with the tray icon tutorial that I have showed you a couple of days ago where basically I show you how to create a tray icon that just stands here uh, in the bottom right on your Windows taskbar. Now let's make this a little bit easier on 60.4. 
160.2 sooner or later we have to hit the boundaries to get an alarm okay we're right in between let's wait two more times otherwise i'm just going to pick some arbitrary price that's uh definitely outside the boundaries let's see okay actually now we had the problem oh okay required one position or positional argument so the problem is we didn't set loop equal to true which we have to do and we have to do it here as well so now actually as you can see the bot triggered but the code was not perfect so we had the problem that the sound was not triggered let's run this again and now we have the alert there you can see price alert for apple apple has reached a price of 160.55 whatever you might want to sell and i hope you hear that there you go and i can now click here on go to stockbroker i can also end the script here and in this case it brings me to neural9.com in your case hopefully to the stockbroker of your choice and this is how it works basically you leave that running and you do that every 60 seconds now one thing that you might want to change is uh, as you saw the last price was not rounded so you can say colon 0.2f to see uh, accuracy to two decimal places so colon 0.2f here as well and now let's just force some random stuff let's change this to 100 uh, or actually no let's change this to 200 so that we can trigger a buy alarm and let's change this to 400 or something so that we don't trigger a sell alarm so with the first iteration here we should see a buy alarm for apple turning on my speakers again so once the price is loaded we should get notification do we should actually get one why don't we get one if last prices i is less than lower limits i lower limits i is 200 and last prices i is 160 so why doesn't it trigger the notification let's see one more time should actually work why doesn't it work there you go price alert for apple apple has reached the price of 160.36 you might want to buy go to stockbroker again opens up neural9.com in my case and of course if you now leave that running you're constantly going to get alarms but yeah that is how you build a simple stock price alert bot or stock price alarm bot in python so that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.